let me hit a couple of bullet points while we're, we have this discussion. I, I brought up steroids before. Are there other medications that we're using more commonly now that are putting people at risk? There are a number of other medications. So proton pump inhibitors, which we use for reflux, right, because everybody has reflux. Um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, some of the antidepressants that we use commonly can have an effect. Uh, aromatase inhibitors, which are part of the adjuvant therapy for breast cancer. In men, androgen deprivation therapy that we use in the setting of prostate cancer. Many of our transplant medications, chemotherapy. So there are a host of medications out there that can have an effect. They don't all do exactly the same thing in each person in terms of being predictable for the exact amount of bone loss. But if patients are on any of these medications, we need to think about evaluating them and following them. Once somebody has one fracture, what's the risk of a second fracture? Do we have that number? Well, we clearly know that there's a fracture cascade. Uh, the, most, uh, the most undeniable risk for fracture or future fracture is previous fracture. Someone with hip fracture, more likely to have any other fracture, vertebral fractures, poorly recognized and under, cause a great morbidity, significant mortality, fracture cascade, uh, proximal humerus upper arm fractures, pelvic fractures, um, and to give you an idea where we've changed, so 10 years ago, uh, we would see someone with a wrist fracture who might have a T-score minus 1.5, and we would be very conservative. You know, today, we're taking these other fractures in context with low bone density uh, and treating them. So if you combine fracture, low bone density, and if you happen to use markers of biochem bio biochemical turnover, uh, we predict risk of fracture better. To answer your question, there's about a five-fold increased risk of a second fracture in the first year following the initial fracture. Osteoporosis um, doesn't occur, doesn't develop overnight, so there are not very many osteoporosis emergencies, but if there's ever to be an osteoporosis urgency or emergency, it's in that patient who's had the first fracture because they're at very high risk for another fracture, especially in the first year to two. Okay, what percent of all patients with osteoporosis, for whatever reason, eventually simply become immobile. Is it just fractures? What else happens? Well, I mean, we know hip fracture data, okay, uh, the classic fracture. We know that 40 to 50% of hip fracture suffer sufferers never regain their pre-fracture status. We know that 20 to 30% of them can't get home. They're either in a nursing home, assisted living, some form uh, of living where uh, they just can't take care of themselves anymore. There's got to so be a significant incidence of depression in all of these folks who really get hit by this, isn't there? there, there I'm sure there is, but actually um, we don't have a lot of data on depression. We are uh, launching actually this month a patient registry where we hope to be able to track that from the patient perspective okay. because kind of getting that information is really critical. And what do you tell patients? Is there organized information you can give them? Is there your canned speech that you give them? What do you do for patients? Well, I, okay, I mean, I saw two people with hip fracture this morning. Okay, one was 90, surrounded in the room by seven loving family members. This woman has moxie. What I, what I tell that patient is, you're not too old to be treated because you want to go home and be independent again, and she probably will. Uh, okay, I see another 67-year-old woman in the hospital, fell, broke her hip, has uh, one or two compression fractures already. She has some issues with maybe I don't want to do this or that. So you have to kind of individualize based on how you read the patient and what the patient needs. I think every patient needs something a little bit different. What I tell them, we want your bones to be stronger. We don't want you to break. We want you to be as independent. And you're probably going to need some medicine because you have, by definition, severe osteoporosis because they've fractured. You know, something else, an image, came into my mind as you guys were speaking. And it's something that is sociologic and societal. There's a phrase, a common phrase, which is not PC anymore. People talk about the little old lady. Well, why is she little? And she's older, it's because, she, I'll bet it's because she compressed her spine. This is an osteoporotic picture, isn't it? 
It is, and we tend to underestimate the importance of spine fractures. So we focus a lot on hip fractures. They are extremely important and um, probably have the worst outcomes, but spine fractures are extremely important as well. They often go under-recognized and over time can absolutely impact mm -hmm. life. People become shorter. They don't breathe as well because their chest cavity is compressed. Uh, abdominal cavity is compressed. Um, I interestingly had a patient when I was first in practice and seeing osteoporosis patients. She was a woman, by the time she came to see me in her late 70s, had had a number of spine fractures. And if you know anything about DC, driving to the office is never an easy thing, right? Particularly at commuting hours. But she would only come into the office either first thing in the morning or at the end of the day. And I said to her, why don't you make an appointment in the middle of the day when traffic isn't so bad? She said, I don't like the way I look anymore. Clothes oh, don't really? fit as well. I don't like people to see me, so I would rather come into the office when the waiting room is not full and I don't have to be seen. That still, that registered with me because it's not something that we think about every day. That was a result of multiple vertebral fractures and led to not only decreased functioning, but this depression um, and a change in her own self-esteem.